Hello everybody and welcome back to Visit File Course. It's a while since you heard that, isn't it? I'm back. I'm back and I'm on the beach and it's a lovely October afternoon with beautiful sun glistening on the water and the waves lapping at the edge of the shore. And we're on Russell Beach. Well, we're actually on Cleveland's Beach at the moment because we are at the side of Mary's shell, which as I pan round, you'll just see at the side of me here. There you go, one shell, which is just about to get submerged, I reckon, by the incoming tide. You can just see Blackpool, Blackpool Tower there, look, in the distance. So this video is all about the upcoming works at Russell Beach and Cleveland and the New Sea Defence Beach Management Works. So before we get on to why there is a concrete mixer and a digger over there, don't forget, make sure that you're subscribed, make sure that you've hit the little bell for notifications and sign up for your email newsletter because you're going to want to know all about this project as it unfolds. The link's in the description underneath the video. So regulars will be familiar with Cleveland Seawall. It's about 10 years since this was completed and a mighty fine job it's done as well. It's beautifully engineered, cast concrete, concrete sections, the full shooting match. And these steps take the energy out of the waves as they, as they come in and climb up it. And you've probably seen them coming over the top. And the different layers, the, the steps and the wall and everything, they're all, they're all purposefully designed where they are as part of the overall sea defence. So this extends all the way down to our boundary with Blackpool and then the new Blackpool scheme continues and then there's other works going on at Bispam as well. So this bit's all right, it's all right, it's protected from flooding, it's protected from erosion. There's sheet piles at the end of what's called the toe of this sea defence so that's big wiggly sheets of cast iron that go ever, ever such a long way down into the beach. So this is all this is all fit to serve, fit to serve and fit for purpose. But if we just walk a little bit past the cafe, it's a little bit of a different story. This is the lovely Russell Beach. This is the lovely Russell Beach. Can you hear the starlings twittering on the, on the egg whisks? <laughs> on the wind turbines that don't turbine. Sound lovely. Proper, proper autumn noise. So this is Russell Beach. This is the, the natural shingly beach. I'm just picking my way carefully through the pebbles and I don't break my neck. You know what I'm like? Ooh, wibble wobble. And this is an old seawall. It's a fabulous sea defence, this beach, because the, the high shingle does the same job as these concrete steps, theoretically. And it takes the energy, it saps the energy out of the waves as they're incoming. And when, when you've been on the beach and the tide's coming in, you'll have seen that it just kind of stops at a trickle rather than carrying on pounding. But this old wall here is quite old and there's not really very much at the end of it. There's no cast iron piles and modern fancy engineering because it dates back to sort of the 30s and 40s, 1930s and 40s. So the beach management project is going to strengthen it and make sure that it's not liable to erosion in particular and to hold the beach in position and to stop the beach from washing away in a, in a bad storm. And the problem of course is if you get two storms on a trot, the whole lot, the whole lot becomes vulnerable and it does happen, it does happen. So the Wire Beach Management Project is going to put a rock a rock revetment along the edge of this sea wall. So you can see here, these, these guys are widening the ramp 
Um, but while, while we're stood here, this old concrete wall comes down like that and they're going to dig all this beach material out and they're going to put the rocks across the edge of the sea wall and then cover them back up so when they're finished you'll not know that they've been. Why are they widening the ramp? That's your next question. Well they're widening the ramp because this is where the rocks are going to be brought onto the beach and this old slate is not wide enough for the, the dumper trucks to safely get down. So it's no more technical than that. So you can see, you can see how much wider they're making it. They've got the concrete form at the bottom there, look. So it's gonna be that much, that much wider than it is now. Which is good because it'll be better access for the, the boat people. So I think most of you that are local have noticed that there is, there is work going off at Jubilee Gardens which of course is the park next to our, our favourite our favourite local hostelry and just while we're passing we'll be doing public open mornings in the venue so watch this space watch this space and sign up for that newsletter and you can pop in you can pop in and see me as the, as the teacher used to say at school and find out what you want to know and ask all those questions that a bit fascinating you. So this is Jubilee Gardens, which currently looks a little bit, a little bit in disarray, I think it's fair to say. We're going to cross the road and I'll give you a better, better view. So this is where all the site equipment and materials are going to be stored, temporarily. So the rocks are going to be delivered here the rocks are going to be stored within the boundary of this fence that's going in at the moment. And they are, they are big, they are big rocks, I have to say, I can't say anymore. They're also creating a new access road, so I'll take you over there in a second and show you, show you that and where that goes. And the site cabins are going to be located on the car park. So the car park, as you can see, is going to be closed until March 2023 when they've finished doing all the prep work and the mobilisation and getting everything ready. And from then onwards, it will be open at weekends. There will be some, some of the parking spaces lost to the cabins, obviously, but, but what are left will be open at weekends. So why are they building a new road? I hear you ask. Well, this little road that accesses the car park is not stable enough, wide enough, big enough, all the rest of it, for getting all the, the, the wagons in to deliver rock and taking them across to the beach. So you can see here, they're starting to do the, the prep work. So the access road is gonna come up from Jubilee Gardens, they're creating a turning circle. That's why they've been digging soil out. See, it all becomes clear when you find out, don't it? It all becomes clear. Can you see that sort of donut-sized heap of soil in the middle there? That's the middle of the turning circle. So the lorries will come in and go out in the same access road. And this road's gonna come up here with a bend on it and then it's going to go in a straight line, straight across to the side of the cafe. So it's not actually, it's not actually picking the promenade up as such, it's crossing it. It's crossing it at an angle. So let's, let's stand here. This is where it sort of twists on its, on its direction out from there. So if we turn round, It's going to go straight across there, straight into that, into that access, so that the, the rocks are not wibbling and wobbling all over the place and ending up who knows where. So there'll be this section of road done first. The section where the concrete mix has just come out is going to be done next. And then the bit in the middle where one road crosses another will be done finally. 
Stand by your beds. Concrete, deliver it. And that's, that's logically planned so that they've got somewhere to put the stuff and an access route to work from and they're not sort of doubling back on themselves. So that's exactly, that's exactly why. There's always a reason. In my experience, there's always a reason. So if we just walk a little bit down here, you'll see the turning circle. This is the gate man. I think he said his name's Paul. Paul? Paul. Paul, Paul the gate man and you're, you're the one who, who will be... Um, moving your cones. Moving the cones, that's <laughs> moving it. Moving the cones, of course. Right, so you can see the turning circle here. Where the... Let's line it up to the fence, that's it where there's the, the little pile of soil in the middle and they've created a raised area. That's so that the lorries can come down the ramp, turn, and then go back the same way that they came. And then the rest of the part is going to be used for storing, storing rock and stone. I must say, I rather like the fetching red and white barriers. I think they're rather natty. So we're going to take a little poodle up to the other end of Russell Prom and we'll show you the other little bit. And Paul, the security man, has just pointed out to me that they're washing the concrete mixer out into escape. So it's not going down your drains. And next time they're full, you can't blame these guys. And while we're talking about tidying up, there's a road sweeper on the way today to shift, to shift the muck that's been left in the road. And these guys are just sweeping it up while they're here very house trained. So we're a bit further along, a bit further north along Russell Beach now and you can see, you can see the guys lights twinkling up in the distance there. The other thing I forgot to say while we were down at the cafe is that they are rebuilding that section of highway that cuts across from Jubilee Gardens to the beach access not just because they're straightening a section out, but also because it needs to be strong enough to take the weight of the trucks and the rocks and everything that's going to be crossing it. So they're laying it in concrete, the new bit. So we're a bit further along Russell Beach and you might remember me telling you about, oh, I've lost track of time, 18 months, two years ago, that this section here, wore away to the point that I was, uh, well, having kittens, I'll be honest. It had really badly eroded with the storms and the, the winter weather. And you can see that it's come back up again naturally. But it's very much a case of sort of crossing your fingers, turning on the spot three times and hoping for the best. Because if, while it was eroded like that, we'd have had a, a serious one in 200 year storm who knows what might have happened because that's when you start getting erosion and the, the seawall is undermined and collapses and don't say it wouldn't because it has in the past um, and it also as well generates enormous waves which are more likely to come over the top and you can see as we walk along this section of beach that it's really built up and the stones and the shingle or it's a nice, gentle slope like that up to the seawall, which is exactly what you want for best, best sea defence. Because when the waves come in, which they're, they're going to be doing shortly, I reckon that's coming in. Do you know, I live at the side of the sea and I never know whether it's coming in or going out. So let's assume that that's going in and the, the, the water will dissipate through the pebbles and it just takes the energy out of it and stops it from forming big waves but the problem is when this gets washed away by the wind and the the bad the bad storms and you can see here it's been windy for a few days perhaps can't see actually on a video but in real life you can see that there's a bit of a there's a bit of a steep slope <laughs> It's like one of them 3D puzzles, isn't it? You can see that there's a steep slope on this top little bit of, of beach where some erosion's taking place during the rough weather. 
So that's why they're doing what they're doing, so that it will keep the pebbles in place and make the wall as effective as it possibly can be. <coughs> so there's a little punchline to go with this, um, this end, which is why we've come down here, because there's going to be a little bit of a um, cosmetic, a cosmetic improvement as well. Are you ready? Yes, we are going to be, we are going to be spruced up people. Um, this, this wall, as you can see, is elderly. It's a bit like me. It's a bit elderly. And in places, some of it is quite badly broken. There are some, you can see some repair patches along there. Um, so as, as sort of a, a sea defence and a, an improvement to the amenity and the aesthetics, there's going to be a little wall added to the front of this little wall. So I'm walking up here because there's some red spray paint marks on the floor. Exhibit A. So these red spray paint marks indicate where the new little wall is going to go. So when I say new little wall, it's they're going to dig a, a dig a sort of a trench out against the old wall because this is this is cast concrete that goes right down into the beach. So it might be old and it might be failing in places, but it is reasonably solid. Anybody got any chips? <laughs> um, so they're going to dig a trench and they're going to sit the pieces in the trench and then, and then bed them on concrete. So the new wall is going to be about 500 millimetres higher than the existing wall. 500 millimetres, there's 300 millimetres in a foot, which is about that. Yeah, would you agree? Um, so 500 millimetres is about possibly that from the, the, the old wall. I would say. Let me, let me see if I can get my camera in a bit better. Oh, I can't. I'm rubbish, aren't I? 500 mil. So it's not very tall. So you'll still be able to sit on the benches and you'll still be able to look over the top and you'll still be able to enjoy the beautiful view. Next question. What's happening to the memorial benches? Well, obviously, people, people have paid good money in loving memory of Jonathan Dickinson. Oh, what a shame. For these memorial benches, they're all dedicated to somebody's loved ones. And as you can see, they collide with the red line. So these benches are all going to be taken off. There's going to be a survey done first, so we know exactly where each one goes. They're going to be taken off, they're going to be taken away and stored. And then they will be put back in exactly the same spot, albeit a bit further back. Because obviously there's going to be a wall there. So they will, they will, just, be, they will just be slightly adjusted. And it will make, make it all look such a lot nicer. So you'll also notice as well that there are the information boards all the way along here, which were produced by the Russell Beach Group, like this one, Exhibit A. And they are going to be fastened onto the new little wall, because these, these, these metal frames, although they've been reasonably robust, they're not ideal. So the new, the new wall is going to have a chamfered top to it, and the signs are going to fit the signs are going to fit into that. So that'll be all neat and tidy. Phase two, phase two, so that's phase one, putting the rock revetment across the, the top of the seawall. Phase two will follow on from the end of phase one. So this little wall is going to be done sort of late spring, early summer-ish next year in 2023. And then phase two will carry on from that. So as you can see, the wooden groins are, well, buried. <laughs> um, the beach is obviously about as high as the beach gets. 
But wooden groins are not ideal because they drop to bits and you lose planks in stormy weather and they take a lot of maintenance and all the rest of it. So they're going to be replaced with stone groins and the planning application and the license application for that has gone in. And depending on whether or not there are any restrictions and requests sent back, that will, that will determine whether or not any changes to the, 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 the thought plan will be put into place in terms of how it's done and when it's done. But that carries on, carries on from there onwards and that will, that will lift the level of the beach and, and hold the, the beach material and set sand and pebbles in place. So that's it. The beach is not going to be closed. You're still going to be able to fish. You're still going to be able to come and walk. And much like the guys were doing up near the cafe, you'll be able to walk on the beach and just walk around them because they'll just close the area off where they're working. If you want to know anything else, you can always get in touch. I'm going to be the information officer on the project, so you can contact me in the usual ways, jane at therabbitpatch.co.uk and all the rest of it. Pop in and see me at the venue at one of the open mornings. They'll be weekly. Um, sign up for your Visit Fell Coast newsletter and you'll get the details on there. So, all good stuff. Anything that is going to protect this lovely beach and stop the area from flooding and stop the area from having serious problems is always going to be a plus. Don't forget, make sure that you've subscribed. Make sure that you've given this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.